I'm live. Hey, y'all. It's your nonprofit Easter, Shalita O'Neill. I promised I would be on here at one o'clock just to get a feel for what you all need and talk about anything nonprofit wise that um, you have on your heart as a nonprofit visionary, whether you just started your organization or whether you've been running your organization for a minute and maybe you just might want to bounce some ideas off of somebody or you're dealing with a certain situation with your nonprofit and you're trying to figure out the best way to get through it. Let's talk. I really want this conversation to be led by you. Although I am prepared to talk about a topic of my own. Um, I was thinking, okay, what can I share that might be helpful to everyone? And um, if, if you don't hop on and, 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 and give your own sort of take on what's going on with you, then I was prepared to talk about how do you do a lot with a little? Because especially if you're starting up and not even just starting up an organization, but it doesn't matter what level you are, how your organization has been around, you really have to be good about leveraging your resources and doing a lot with a little. Because a lot of times, you know, we're all dependent on funding and, and revenue streams and, and those types of resources coming into the organization. And sometimes it could be coming a little bit slower than other times, but we still have work to do. We still have expectations to meet and obligations to fulfill with our organization. And so how do we still get those things done? When we're working on a shoestring budget. <laughs> so we'll talk about that too. But I want to give you a second to join. And I want to, to uh, post what or comment on what you want me to talk about. What questions are you working through right now? Come on with it. It's free. <laughs> So I'll give you a moment. For those of you watching, what's what are you doing? Why are you watching? What 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 are you hoping to learn? <clears throat> Where are you with your nonprofit? Are you just starting? Are you thinking about a nonprofit and you're not really sure if you want to do that? Or you've been running a nonprofit for a long time and there's some issues or things that may have come up, or you just, you know. Want some feedback on something? What what you dealing with? What's going on? Talk to me. Don't be shy. Hmm. Don't be shy, y'all. Come through. And it's nice out here too. Come on, look look at the scenery. Come on. <laughs> Drink some more my tea. I'm almost done. Uh oh, it's a little battery. I just plugged this in. Okay. Okay. So I'll go ahead and um. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's right. Watch live now. Come on, I got the message. They sending the messages out. Come on, y'all. Live. It's live. It's live. It's live. We live. We live. With an non-profit Easter. Okay. <laughs> okay, lighten up. Have fun with stuff. Um, okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll get started and I'll and I'll talk a little bit more about how do you do a lot with a little. And that was something that I had to do with my organization, my first organization, and even still now with my second foundation. Um, it's nothing wrong with leveraging your resources and being smart about how you do your work. Because again, you know, depending on what kind of funding you have or don't have, because a lot of you are like, I don't have the money, I got the money, I got the money, I got the money, I got the money. But you still need to get some stuff done. So what I did um, and, and had to get really good at is leveraging partnerships and resources in that way. Okay, Kim. So you say you have a nonprofit, you're looking to go more public. It has primarily been a business of one, but you're looking for the right people to bring in. Okay. 
Right. And that's going to be key. That's going to be key, key, key. Because especially when we're talking about doing a lot with the little, you're going to need to assemble your tribe. Your and and your tribe is your board members, your volunteers, you know, people who can advise you on how you want to implement your organization. But you have to take the time out to plan. A lot of times we want to get started. We want to go ahead and start doing stuff without taking the time to build a strong tribe because you're going to lean on them when it comes time to raise money, when it comes time to get different resources. So really, before you start reaching out to build your tribe or to maybe potentially bring your board members in, you have to have a good idea of what do you want to do? You know, what what's the mission of your organization? You can think through that some of that stuff. You know, what what are you asking people to get involved with? What um, what are your goals? What are your what's your uh, your your potential programming look like? What's your budget? What are outcomes? What do you actually want to because your organization is going to be around? What do you want to create in the world? Right. Because of you, what will be better? So you have to take time to to plan and think through that first. And even if it's not concrete, because, you know, you, you, things change. And as you engage your board members, you know, they may have thoughts and, you know, things like that. But your vision, your overall vision that you have in your mind that was given to you and only you, that's not going to change. But how you meet that vision or make that vision real might change along, you know, along the way. So initially, it's important for you to get clear on what you want to do and then be clear about what you need from folks and what type of environment do you want to create in your organization? What do you want to be known for? What's going to be your culture, right? Of working together, these people that you're going to start reaching out to, what do you want them to do? You know, what, what types of um, personalities do you want them to have? A lot of times we just put the information out there and say, Oh, whoever wants to help me. Oh, I have this idea. And who want to help? Okay, come on. Come all, come one. Come one, come all. (laughs) No, we don't want to do that. You want to have an idea of the type of people that you want to engage. So I would tell you, you know, think through that too, um, because then that's going to determine where do you go to recruit and engage board members. And some people initially will have their family members or their best friends on their board. Don't do that. They can be an advisory board or advisory group that aren't necessarily your board members, right? So they have no legal responsibility to the organization, but they care about you and the mission and they can still guide you. But, you know, you shift the dynamic when you start inviting board members who are uh, are family members or, or best friends, because, you know, then as soon as they have to make a decision that you don't like, you know, or you have to hold them accountable for something that they're not doing, then the dynamics shift. And you don't need that negativity in your life. <laughs> okay. So if you why aren't you looking for people, no family members. Okay. No partners, no family members, no best friends as um, board members. But yeah, so I would start there. And I was just talking um in the Facebook group. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, you should join there too. The nonprofit Visionary Academy. Just join um And because we have conversations over there, too, about uh, I just had a a live there and we talked a little bit more about the life cycle of the organization and prioritizing your efforts so that you don't get into a situation where you put the cart before the horse and now things are falling apart or or you're building the plane while you're flying it. And that's not safe. (laughs) So, you know, I hope that was helpful. Kim, I hope that was helpful. But, um, you know, just think through it. And, and, you know, I have a whole bunch of resources to help you start thinking through what that could look like. What are some of the steps? I got the online course, the Dream Your Nonprofit in a Weekend. And I'll put the links for that. So if you want to sort of just want to go on your own and, and, and walk through that and get some ideas, there's templates there, collection of videos, things to sort of get you in the right mindset. I have the, the vision book, a Dream Your Nonprofit in a Weekend vision book. So you walk you through, you know, some of these things too. So, so many different ways I can be supportive. And if you want one-on-one support, let me know too, because we could do that as well. Got that going on. So in the meantime, um, (laughs) awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks, Kim. 
So once you, but once you get your folks together, right. And, and, and now you got to make some things happen. You got, you've got to pay for maybe your logo or you've got to, you know, get some board insurance or, you know, you've got some things coming up, some seed dollars. I like to call it seed dollars. And you're trying to do a lot with a little bit of money or a little bit of resources. There's some ideas, a way to shift your perspective, right? So you're going to need to bring in a coach or a consultant, whether it's me or any, or doesn't, you know, or whoever to help guide you. Or if you have a board member that it has experience with strategic planning or experience building an organization, make sure when you're thinking about your board members, you're, you're thinking about who can I reach out that can also fill that need um, as well. Um, I saw a message that came in from, hey, LV. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, she's she's one of my nonprofit visionary clients. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for putting that out there, LV. I did not tell her to do that, y'all. She's coming from her heart. And if you know, look, you don't know LV, but LV tells the truth. So thank you, LV, Sia. But, you know, think through. That's one of the things with your board members. Make sure that they have a collection of expertise that you are going to need with your nonprofit. So you want to have people who have experience building organizations or have that background, maybe somebody from HR, human resources. You want to have someone who has experience in marketing and maybe uh, graphic design. You want to have an attorney on your uh, that's that's well versed in nonprofit um, law or that knows another attorney or has connections to attorneys who can help you with the different types of needs legal needs you might need, right? So, or you might, you might encounter. So be, be very deliberate about the talent that you attract for your board, because that can save you money, right? I mean, we're not using them. I mean, they know that they're attracted to your organization because they know they have a skill set that they want to give to you for free or pro bono, right? Um, so it's nothing, you know, we're being authentic here. It's nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But be mindful. That's the way that you can save money. So if a lot of you are like, I don't have money for a coach. I don't have money for, you know, I won't have money for these things. Be okay. Look at your tribe. If you build your tribe the right way, you build your board the right way, the right way, you'll be able to get in-kind supports and different resources that you won't have to pay for. Now, there will come a time you're going to have to pay for something, y'all. Y'all know, hashtag nonprofit, no filter. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of y'all want some, want, want in-depth information for nothing. Let me tell you, it costs money and experiences to share and to learn the different types of information that I share and the different types of information that other consultants and other professionals, like it, it takes time and money to build up skill set. So everything is not necessarily going to be free. And as nonprofit visionaries, if we can get out of that mindset, the better things will be for us to shift our perspective around money and what the what's a reasonable expectation of people's time time and talent and gifts okay you you have to if you have to invest you look at it as an investment in yourself you do your due diligence when you're looking at any consultant to do any type of work you want to do you you know you want to look at reviews you you want to uh you know see how professional they are how they package their information their track record you know, you want to make sure that you do your due diligence first so that you are you are investing your your money and you're going to get a return on that investment. You don't need a lot of times we out here. I've had clients that will tell me, oh, Shalita, I've been burned, man. I've been burned and somebody done said and I, OK, and I feel so bad. But I'm like, y'all need to do your due diligence. And we like to try to cut corners to save money. And when we cut corners to save money, you get what you pay for. Right. You, you 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 want somebody to tell you what you want to hear. And so you're going to pay them some money to tell you what you want to hear, as opposed to somebody who's going to tell you what is real and to help you avoid some of the barriers. And maybe you may not want to hear it, but you'll be better for it. Right. So 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 we got to kind of check that. You know, what's your role in investing in folks that don't give you a return on your investment? Hey, wait a minute. That's a word. I love when I listen. I thought talking about nonprofit stuff, but then the other stuff coming because I was just saying on my other page, we are our nonprofits. 
right? So we, whatever we're dealing with or whatever is manifesting in our personal lives and internally is going to manifest in our nonprofit organizations. So if you're investing in people that aren't giving you a return on your investment, you have to look at what role are you playing in that? What decisions are you making, right, that you could shift and make a different decision so that you can get what you need? Think about that. That's real. That's real talk. Same thing with your nonprofit. So not everybody that say they can help you or that comes in your space deserves to be in your space. People have to be vetted. Just the same with coaches, consultants, so so you don't get burned, right? But once you find that consultant, because you got there's a level of trust there. Once you find that consultant, you'll find that person that you want to bring in because it is hiring consultants to do work is a natural regular thing with nonprofits, especially the nonprofits who are are successful, right? Even there's some funders that will give you money. It's called capacity building. They will give you money in order to bring in consultants to help you do work because they understand that although you may have a good board and you may have people on your board that, you know, have different skill sets and, and everything, not everybody knows how to help a nonprofit build certain certain components. So you'll need along the life of your organization, you'll need different types of consultants to come in, whether that's an executive coach. I know I I, uh, benefited from having an executive coach and actually a funder gave me a grant to get a executive coach because it's lonely being a nonprofit founder. And even even if you didn't start the organization, running an organization or nonprofit leadership can be lonely because not everybody understands what goes into running an organization and having so many different moving pieces happening. And so the executive coach for me sort of, it, it served as a little bit of therapy, <laughs> professional therapy, as well as giving me some tools to deal with some things that I was dealing with as an executive director. So that's just another type of consultant too, that, you know, um, that you'll probably need to engage in fundraising consultants. There's all kinds of consultants that nonprofits take advantage of. And I say all that to say that, yes, there will be times when you can get stuff for free and you need to leverage your resources with the people that you engage with your organization. And there will also be times where you will need to to pool your funds to be able to bring in professionals that can give you a return on your investment. Everything you pay for you should look at it as what, how is this going to increase either the revenue or the, the quality of my work and, and what I want to do with my population. So some ways, too, that you can think about this. Initially, when you're starting your organization and you're putting money into it, once you get keep your receipts and everything, because that could be a tax deduction for you once you if you are organizing quickly. Right. Because typically when um, you submit your, your your 1023 or your paperwork, they retro it back to the day that you started or that you, um, that you filed your paperwork. So anything that you put into it personally out your own pocket, keep the receipts because that's a tax write-off. You can deduct that, right? Have that as sort of a business expense that you're putting into your organization. So think of it that way. Also, let's say you need to raise, you know, a good seed or startup, or even if you you're not starting up a you're not starting up an organization, but there's a new program or there's some new things that your organization needs, and maybe you don't have a grant identified right then and there, or you have, the money that you have can't go to that. Then again, tap your board members because a lot of times you know we we are we are slow to ask our board member for things that that include money. Get out of that. Stop it. Stop. 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 If your board members shy away, when you start having that financial conversation, you should rethink what their role is, you know, or their, you know, how effective they're going to be, because that's part of it. You can't be a board member and not be expected to raise funds. And now understanding that depending on your organization and the role that um, the board member is filling, right? So maybe you have, um, you're working with the population, maybe young people who don't have any money, but you want them represented on your board and maybe they don't have any money. Okay, then there may be different expectations for that that role, right? But overall, people should be raising money. These board members should be raising money for your organization. There should be an expectation that this is the minimum 
And this should, when I tell y'all about how you prepare people to be board members, I got videos on that. You need to have an application. You need to have a vetting process. You need to have your expectations laid out so they know that you are responsible for bringing in a minimum of $1,000 a year, which, y'all, come on. I mean, even out their own pocket, you know, what? That's less than $100 a month. And we spend money on, it's about prioritizing too. You have that conversation with, with your folks. Prioritizing. If they're on the board of your organization and they say they care about what you guys are doing, <clears throat> then they need to prioritize that, right? So instead of going to Starbucks five days a week, then maybe you put some money aside for the nonprofit whose board you sit on, right? There's ways to look at it. But let's say you need, you know, $10,000 or something like that for for um, startup costs or an event that's coming up or something, you should be able to go to your board and say, okay, and if you got 10 people on your board, that's, I need a thousand dollars each. <clears throat> and whether that's out of their own pocket or whether that they go and have an event or, you know, or a small, you go to their network and say, Hey, you know, I'm raising money for my organization. Facebook, don't sleep on it. Facebook has really been helpful and helping me to bring in, because I have another foundation now, funds to the organization. It's easy. You know, people can say, Hey, I donated to this organization and we're trying to raise $200. Little things like that add up. So, but you need to have that expectation with your board members up front that yes, you're responsible for governing the organization and legally, and you're also legally responsible for helping me to raise funds for the organization as well. So never the first thing that comes to your mind, board members. Leverage their expertise so you don't have to pay for it and leverage their networks because when it comes to needing some funds, right? Asking them what's the minimum that they are responsible for raising every year or who do they know that could maybe give $500. If you, when, you, when we think of things, sometimes we, we blow things out of proportion. We get intimidated because we look at how much money we need. Oh, Oh my gosh, I need $10,000. $10,000 is a lot of money. $10,000 is not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. When you break it down and say, oh, okay, I, I just need 10 people to give me $1,000. Okay, I just need, you know, I just need um, um, 20 people to give me $500. Hey, Jane. <laughs> I told you I was going to hop on over here. Okay. Break it down. And Jamie, look, Jamie is my everything. Jamie has been my, um, with both of my organizations, my my admin coordinator, my office director, my contracts. She's been everything. Marketing. She does everything. She's amazing. So you can attest to what I'm saying, Jamie. You know, we had to raise, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars so that we could employ folks and, you know, do our work. We had to be really creative around leveraging our resources to get things done and our impacts. And, and, and an important part of that is determining what do you actually want to accomplish? We out here, some of people out here with no goals, just doing stuff, <laughs> right? Like has nothing to do with the impact that you want to have with your organization. That's why I tell y'all planning is so important. You have to first start with the planning phase, building things out, doing your research, trying to come up with a strategy on how you're going to create change in the world. I'm going to do this and then go and do your own thing and think everything's going to come together the way you want it to. You have to be very clear about the planning of what you need, because when we start doing stuff out of order, that's when it gets harder for us. And then we got to, it makes it harder because we got to stop and go back and retrace and rethink and we don't spend money we don't need to spend we don't did things we don't need to do because we're being too fast slow down it's not a race okay nobody racing you you're on, you're on your own lane there's no race there's no time limit there's no if you don't do this in the next six months the world's gonna explode there is none of that so slow down plan, do the right things and put the right pieces in place first by building your strong board, by building your tribe of volunteers, by building your tribe of partners in the community, other organizations that maybe you can learn from, maybe that you can partner with so that there's an exchange so you can identify what do you have of value to contribute because it's not 